Good evening. I'm Jack Barry. Tonight, Hank Bloomberg Garden, who has so far won $116,000, will play a fourth tie game against Harold Craig at $2,000 a point. Much could be won or lost in just a matter of moments. To learn the outcome, let's meet our first two players. As Geritol, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast, presents 21. Back for the third week, Mr. Harold Craig. And returning with $116,000, Mr. Hank Bloomgart. Gentlemen, welcome back to 21. That thunderous reception from our studio audience indicates that both of you are well-liked by all audiences and having a hard job deciding who they want to win on or lose on this program. How do you feel tonight, Hank, with $116,000 at stake? Same way I felt when I was engaged in all those times with Jim Snodgrass. This tell the story? Yeah, I can see what you mean. I understand exactly. And how about you, Harold? Uh, your first fling here at television, and you come from that small town up in state New York, Granville. Much excitement up there? Oh, yes. We've had quite a hum up there. A uh hum? -huh. More, more excitement, I believe, since last year's carnival, perhaps. <laughs> I must hear about the carnival sometime, Harold. That must be a humdinger if this created a hum. Well, gentlemen, we'll get right to business here on the program. Everybody's out there waiting to see what's going to happen at $2,000 a point because one of you could, could win $42,000 here in a few moments if you end up a score of 21 to nothing. So let's get right to it. Fellas, take your place in the studios. Put on your earphones. And I mean this sincerely. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. <laughs> Neither player inside the studios can hear anything until I turn the studios on with these switches, nor can they see anybody in the studio audience or hear the applause. I'll turn the studios on right now. Can you hear me all right, Hank? Very well, thanks. And how about you, Harold? Yes, I can. All right, fellas. Uh, a big one's coming up, so give yourself a moment or so to calm down, and we'll get right on with the game. All right, Hank. And Harold, Hank, I'm going to turn your studio off the air once again. It's at $2,000 a point. Your $116,000 is at stake, and I'll get back to you in a moment. Harold, I think you know the object. You have to get to 21 as fast as you possibly can by answering questions graded from 1 to 11. The 11, 10s, and 9s are the more seriously hard. The 1, 2s, and 3s are a little easier. And here is the first category. Novel. Novel. How many points do you want from 1 to 11? You grade yourself. Uh, I'll shoot the works on this, and I'll try 11. You'll go the, all the way. The most difficult question, 11 points. All right, Harold, we know you read a lot, and you've taken a chance on this one. Here you are for 11 points. Tell us the names of the characters referred to in the following novels. First, The Last of the Mohegans by James Fenimore Cooper. Second, The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Third, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Fourth, The Pathfinder by James Fenimore Cooper. That is the question for 11 points. Shall we start at the beginning, Harold? Yes, please. All right. First, The Last of the Mohegans by James Fenimore Cooper. The, the hero in The Last of the Mohegans was the, the Indian, and uh, his name was Uncas. Then what, that your answer is? Uncas. Uncas is right. You've got the first part. Incidentally, I would have accepted Shinga Chuk, his father, who also might have been considered by some to be The Last of the Mohegans. Second... The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. The uh, <clears throat> the uh, Hunchback was the uh, bell ringer in the in the book, and uh, his name was. It sounds more uh, Japanese than it does French, but uh, I believe it's Quasi Modo. You're right. You've got two of them. Two to go. Third, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Uh, uh, the Count is the, uh, he's a fellow who had all the trials and tribulations, and uh, he's quite a swashbuckler after a while, and uh, his name was uh, uh, Edmund Dante. Dante is right. You've got three. You have one to go for a full 11 points. The Pathfinder by James Fenimore Cooper. Uh, he was the uh, the hero in most of uh, 
most of the uh, series there, the uh, oh, leather stocking, leather stocking tails, and uh, sometimes called Hawkeye, Hawkeye, but his uh, real name was uh, Natty Natty Bumpo. You're right for a full eleven points. We'll get back to you in just a moment, Alan. Hank Bloomgarden, $116,000 at stake at $2,000 a point. The category is novels. How many points do you want from 1 to 11? Grade yourself. I'll, <clears throat> I'll try for 10 points. 10 points, one of our more difficult questions. Name the authors of the following novels of prophecy and pseudo-scientific fantasy. First, The Time Machine, published in 1895. Second, From Earth to the Moon, published in 1865. Third, Looking Backward, published in 1888. First, The Time Machine. The Time Machine was written by H.G. Wells. Correct. Second, From Earth to the Moon. Did, did you say the year in which that was written? 1865. Must have been Jules Verne. Jules Verne. Jules Verne is correct. You've got two of them, one to go for 10 points. Looking Backward, published in 1888. Looking Backward. It was about the man who was mesmerized for over 100 years. Edward Bellamy. You're right, for a full 10 points. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a moment, huh? Harold Craig, you have 11 points. The category is kings. Kings. How many points do you want? I'll, I'll try for 21. I'll take uh, 10. You're going all the way. 10 points, which would give you 21. I must point out to you that even if you answer correctly, Mr. Bloomgarten still has his turn to go, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Incidentally, since you're trying for 21, this is the critical point of the game. You can have some extra time if you need it. Here is your question. When the Republicans won the 1931 elections and the dictatorship of this country, the Republicans of this particular country, when, and the dictatorship of this country crumbled, its king refused to abdicate. He was outlawed and fled, never to return to his native land during his lifetime. Tell us first, the name and number of this king, second, the name of the ruling family to which he belonged, and third, the name of his grandson, who is currently being groomed as the future king of this country. Do you understand the question? Yes, yes. You, you want some extra time to think it over? Uh, yes, of course, please. <laughs> I'll tell you when your time is up, and good luck, Harold. 